worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, O God, because you are giving us liberty even in this far country, far from our own places, O God, that we can gather and we can study your word. I pray, Lord, that we're not going to neglect this liberty that you have given us, but we're going to treasure it and be faithful, Lord, every time that we gather, Lord, so that we can feast and fellowship with thy word. I pray, Lord, that even today you will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us, Lord, by your blood, that we may become a worthy vessel of the truths that we will encounter today from thy word. Give us an open heart and mind, O God, that even though rebuke may come, we're going to take it in a positive way because you are doing all of these things for our good. So I pray, O God, that you're going to give us a heart that is mellow, that is open to your word, that is flexible, adaptable, O God. And if there are things that must be fixed in our lives, help us, Lord, to be humble, to admit them, and do the necessary things, Lord, that we may be able to live according to your will and that we can glorify your name in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for today. We love you. We thank you for loving us. And I pray, Lord, that after everything is said and done today, your name and your name alone will be glorified and lifted up in our midst because I pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. So for the uh, past three preachings, we are studying about the book of Romans. So we are trying to go through the book of Romans. And in three preachings, we only cover five verses. So we will try to cover more verses as we continue so that maybe after one year, we can finish the book of Romans. We are trying to preach in an expository manner so that we can really see what the author of the Word of God, which is the Holy Spirit, is really trying to tell us. We are going to avoid just telling our stories, just telling our experiences, because what must be preached, the Bible says, is the Word of God. It must be the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. It must not be our own words, not our opinion, not our feelings, not how we interpret the Word of God, but always according to the Scriptures. Amen. Amen. Because it is the only safe place to be, to be in the center of the will of God as we obey His Word. So as we have studied last time, we saw that in Christ, we have things that people may not understand, but things were given to us that overwhelm each and every Christian. We have said that we were given an inheritance that will never diminish. We have been given a love that cannot be separated. We are given a life that will last all throughout eternity. And we are given the word of God that will continue to guide us to be our light in our path. So that we will be able to reach the destination that God wanted us to reach. As the Apostle Paul says at the end of his life that he has fought a good fight he kept the faith and he was able to finish the course and the reason why we are going to finish our course is only through and by the grace of god amen. amen without the grace of god then there is nothing that we can accomplish in life because only through him who is working in us for us through us can things be accomplished that will glorify the name of God. Verse number 6 says, Among whom are ye also called of Jesus Christ, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So again, if we're going to notice, the, word, the words to be is in open and closed Parenthesis, or in italics in the King James Bible because the uh, translators are telling us that these are not included in the original. So what the Bible uh, is telling is that to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called saints. So if you are saved today, then you are a saint. You do not have to wait for more time. You do not have to wait or wish that your body will not decay so that you will be pronounced as 
saint. If you are saved today, then according to the word of God, you are a saint. Amen. Amen. It means separated for the Lord Jesus Christ. A saint is a person not exalted, but a person who exalts the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A saint is a person like John the Baptist who says, uh, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, he must increase but I must decrease. A saint is a person like the Apostle Paul who says, I am the chiefest of sinners, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Amen. So all of us, if you are saved today, you are a saint. So you are Saint Mon. Saint Cedric. Saint Nevermind. Amen. So we are all saints by the grace of God. So if we will go to the Bible, we will see that saints are described in several ways. Number one, saints are created. Saints are created. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse number 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if you are in Christ, the Bible says, you are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You see, once you repented of your sin, open your heart and by faith, accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you ceases to be you. You are now a new creation in Christ. Amen. Amen. God has created you to be a saint. Let us try to understand. You may not be a saint yet in your behavior, but as far as God is concerned, you are already separated for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. There is a difference between our state and our standing. In the eyes of God, we are saint. We may not be saint in the eyes of other people. Because you see, there are Christians who still gossip. There are Christians who, who still uh, involve themselves in the vices of this world. There are Christians who are not really faithful in obeying God, not faithful in reading the Word of God, may show an attitude that is not God-glorifying. But ladies and gentlemen, as far as God is concerned, we are already forgiven and we already have a place in heaven. Amen. Amen. And knowing this, it should spur us to live like we should live a person separated for the glory of God. Ephesians 2.10 For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You see, a saved person does good things. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works. Sin is the exemption, not the rule. Before we got saved, sin is the rule. And good works are the exemption. But now that we are saved, the default is we do good. And whenever we sin, it is not because we enjoy it. It is something that we are tempted to do. And if we can do something about it, we are going to avoid it. But it can only happen through the grace and the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Number two, saints are cleansed. Saints are cleansed. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. And this is very interesting because the Bible says, And such were some of you. What are we before? If you're going to read the preceding verses, the verses before this, he enumerated things that are not becoming a Christian. He enumerated things that are being done by the unbelievers. But then he says, And some were some of you, but ye are washed. Amen. Amen. That made the difference. We were that kind of a person before, but when we approached the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, We were washed, we are sanctified, and we are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Look at those big words, sanctified. It means that we are separated for the use of God. Look at that word justified. It means that we are declared to be righteous or not sinful altogether. And this was done 
by the Spirit of God. So if you are saved, you are a saint, and you are clean. But because we are still in this world, we will still be spotted by the world. We will still be contaminated by the sin of this world. But there is a provision that even if we will sin, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, with the Father. He will be the one to plead our case. And if Jesus is our attorney, all cases will be won by the grace of God. Amen? So we are cleansed. We are already clean in the sight of God. Not only that, but saints are commissioned. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. The Bible says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So in a way, an ambassador represents a country in another country. Amen. That's why we have ambassadors here. And in the Philippines, there are ambassadors of different countries that are representing their countries in a country that they do not live in. The Bible says that we are ambassadors. How come, Pastor? Because once we got saved, we became citizens of heaven. So we are now a citizen of the heavenly kingdom. But we are still in this world in what capacity? As an ambassador of Christ. So what we are actually doing now is representing heaven here on earth doing things that will reconcile sinful men with the righteous God. There is only one mediator, but we are ambassadors to that mediator. Amen? Who is the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why, listen, if you are saved, there is something that you need to do. There is something that you must accomplish in life. God did not save you just to go to heaven. Because if the only reason for salvation is heaven, then the moment you got saved, you should have gone to heaven. But why is it that we are still here? Because there are still lost sinners that we were before that we must reach to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So a Christian who is not trying to win a soul is missing the whole mark. The whole point of being a Christian. The Christian's business is soul winning. If you do not want to win souls, then you have no business being a Christian. Because that is the reason why God saved us, is so that we can reach those people who are in need of salvation. And mind you, we are representing God. Amen? Amen. And that is the highest thing that can happen into a person in this world. Not only that, but saints are cultivated. Saints are cultivated. John chapter 15, verse number 2. He says, every branch. We are branches that are drafted, grafted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. We're not talking about salvation. We're talking about fruits. Meaning to say, when you got saved, there must be fruits in your life. And he said, uh, and every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth much fruit. There is the cultivation. There is a purging. That is why, listen, you are a Christian. You decide to live godly. You decide to win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there are even things that may seem bad that is happening to you. Listen, that is God's purging. In order for a vine to, bri to bring forth much uh, uh, grapes, it must be purged. It must... Uh, undergo cleansing so that it can bear much fruit. And ladies and gentlemen, trials and testings are part of the life of a saint and God is allowing it so that we can become more mature in our service to the Lord. Amen. So it is not a walk in the park. It is not a piece of cake. It is going to be very hard, but all through the way, the Lord Jesus Christ is with us. Amen. Amen. And because of this, saints are crowned. Saints are crowned. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Amen. A crown of righteousness for eight. 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me. Paul says, at that day, the judgment seat of Christ, and not to me only, but unto all them that also that love his appearing. So do you love the second coming? Amen. Amen. So if you love the second coming, you're going to have a crown of righteousness. Amen? Amen. No. You need to work while we are waiting for the coming of the Lord. Not just loving it, not just passively waiting for it, but Jesus says, occupy till I come. Work while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. Ladies and gentlemen, Christian life is a life of effort, it is a life of service, it, it is a life of servitude to the Lord, and the Bible says we are a servant to the Master who is Jesus Christ. Amen? That is why we need to do something. Hindi yung pag nasave ka, nakadikwatro ka na lang, inihintay mo pagbabalik ng Panginoon. You need to do something. You need to serve God. What did God say? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. God says that we need to counsel people. God says that we need to worship Him, to read the Bible, to pray every day, to attend every services, to give, to sacrifice, and to die if need be for the service of God. That is what is required in a saint. And sad to say, so many Christians wanted to live comfortably while waiting for the coming of the Lord. And if you are that kind of a Christian, look at me. Shame on you. Because we are not doing what we're supposed to do in order to glorify God in our lives. Notice in verse 7 that Paul says, we have grace and peace. You see, these two words are very important for there is no peace apart from God's grace. The grace of God gives us peace. And if there is grace, there will definitely be peace from the Lord. And there are two kinds of peace. The peace of God and the peace with God. Peace with God is salvation, while the peace of God is what we call being assured that all things will work together for good. Amen? I have a favorite illustration regarding this when there was a, uh, a contest to, to paint a portrait of a piece. Then many of those who joined have submitted a painting that shows quietness, tranquility, shows isolation and all of these things where there is almost no movement, that everything is peaceful. But you know, the one who won the contest is a painting when there is a storm, there is a tree, almost it was all of its uh, leaves, but in one branch that is barely hanging, there is a nest, and there is a small bird that is sleeping peacefully, trusting that God will not allow the sparrow to go down to the ground without the knowledge of God. And it says, that is peace. In the midst of trouble, you are assured that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? You remember when, when the disciples are in the midst of a storm while they were in a boat? They said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And then the Lord Jesus Christ stood up and he rebuked the wind, telling his disciples, if you are with me, you are in safe hands. Amen? And we will make it because of the Lord. Jesus Christ. So that is a what? The things that we need to do or uh, we describe as a saint of the Lord. And then in verse number 8, the Bible says first. So we will now go to the message first. The first point. It says, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole World. Not, of course, not the Philippines, ne, then not, not Thailand, not Cambodia, the known world during that time. Notice the testimony or status of the Roman Christians. Their faith is, is spoken of. Not their abilities. Not their athletics. Not their appearance. Not their riches. Not their acclaims. 
not their accolades, not their power, not their knowledge, but their faith. So what is important in our Christian life is our faith. Because only faith can accomplish things in our lives through the help of God. But you know the sad thing today is that even Christians are glorying in what they accomplish in life. In their beautiful buildings. In their youth offerings. In the number of their attendance. It is not bad to have good numbers. But what I am trying to say is the most important thing that a Christian must possess and must be known for is his faith in God. Amen. Not the things that he accomplished. Why? If you have faith in God, the first thing that you will know is what the Lord Jesus Christ says, without me, you can do nothing. Amen. So it is not us who are accomplishing things. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. It is God. Uh, the whole, uh, the, in the Bible, the Old Testament, Zerubbabel was told, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Listen, there is no place, pride has no place in the heart of a Christian. Boasting has no place in the heart of a Christian. If you wanted to become popular, go to show business, not in the ministry. Because in the ministry, there is only one superstar, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. In this church, there is only one master, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. The person who must occupy the limelight, who must be the paramount in our life, who must be the most important, is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And if a pastor is trying to create followers of him, then shame to him. Why? Because he is there to lift the Lord Jesus Christ up in the lives of the people. Hindi tayo nakakalungkot ngayon, maraming pastor, gusto nila makilala. Lumunda ka sa swimming pool na walang tubig, makikilala ka. Kumuha ka lang ng report na lilitratuhan yung paglundag mo. We are not here to become popular because the Bible says, what shall it profit a man even if he gained the whole world and suffered the loss? of his own soul. So that's why if you have a different motive, do it somewhere else. Don't do it in the church of God. Because we are here to glorify our Lord. Amen? You see, during the time of the Apostle Paul, emperor worship was the rule of the day. In Rome, there is a, uh, a term for those who worship the emperor Caesar, and they are known as Caesaranios. Meaning to say, in that place, Caesar is worshipped as God and Savior. That is why there is a, we call them false gods. Because they claim divinity and forcing people to worship them. So, during that time in Rome, when a Roman soldier stop you and ask you for a certificate of loyalty and worship to Caesar, and if you cannot show anything, you will be put in court. If you are pledging allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be given two times to denounce it or deny the Lord Jesus Christ. If you will refuse, then you will be burned at the stake, fed to the lions or wild dogs, crushed by a boulder, or you will be crucified. So not to worship the emperor during that time is a capital crime. And that is why it is very hard to become a Christian in Rome. Because it will mean your very life if you will be uh, proven that you are worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is something that is very, very hard. That is why... They need a stronger faith compared to other Christians to exist in Rome. And because of this persecution, those Christians who wanted to continue worshiping the Lord go to what you call catacombs. Are you familiar with catacombs? These are an underground system in Rome. And this is the only place where Christians can feel safe. Do you know why? Because Roman soldiers are so superstitious that they will not go through or in the catacomb. 
So when Christians are worshiping in the catacombs, they are safe to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So that is why they are known for their faith because they do these things. Faith gives us courage to face the present with confidence and the future with expectancy. So that is what faith can do for us. So let us look at the traits of a dedicated Christian as we can see in the life of the Apostle Paul. Don't worry, we will, uh, it's raining, you cannot go home anyway. So until it stops raining, we are going to continually raining the Word of God. Amen? So you pray that the rain will stop, and if it stopped, I may also stop. So the Apostle Paul is one of the most popular and well-known Christians in Christendom, even though it is not by his own choice. He did not deliberately make himself popular, but he became popular because he defied all odds in worshiping and preaching the Word of God. Remember, if you're going to live the life of the Apostle Paul, he was put in jeopardy or even near death experiences because of his faith in the Lord. He was stoned to death in Lystra, but he survived. He was floating uh, on, in, in, on water a day and a night and experienced all of these things. Why? Because of his faith and his love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he is a person that is discussed until now may be second to the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is always the first. So, how did the Apostle Paul manage to influence human beings for such a long, long time that even though he was dead for almost 2,000 years or more than 2,000 years, he's still being spoken of and his faith is being celebrated. Do you know why? Paul was just a little man. Many scholars say that he was not even a person that you will look twice to. Meaning to say his countenance is not handsome, unlike Deo. You will not put lipsticks by meeting Paul, unlike Deo. But even though he's just a small man and may seem insignificant to other people, he is a person who is completely sold out and dedicated to God. That is the characteristic of the Apostle Paul. I remember reading the uh, biography of D.L. Moody uh, when it comes to the turning point of his life is when he asked the question, I wonder what God can do to a man who will dedicate his life wholly to the Lord. And then he said, Lord, I want to be that man. And he did. He dedicated his life to the Lord. And D.L. Moody is known as the man who led literally a million souls to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, you and God is already a majority because no one can defeat God. Amen? So we can see here that the first characteristic or trait of a dedicated Christian is found in verse 9. He says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you in my prayers. The first trait of a dedicated Christian is he realizes that God is his witness. Not men. But God is his witness. You see, in this particular area, Paul is saying two things actually. That God is our witness and he is watching us. God is watching us. And God is our witness and he is defending us. He's not only watching us, but he is defending us. Look at first John chapter 2 verse 1. This is very assuring. It says, My little children. No, no. First John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, referring to 
the children of God. These things write I unto you that ye sin not. We must do everything by the help of the Holy Spirit not to sin. But we know it is impossible since we are still in our old Adamic nature. He says that ye sin not. And if any man sin, you see, the possibility of committing sin, even though you are a child of God, you can still commit sin. You see, sometimes people do not have the right understanding of how it is to be a child of God. That if a child of God committed sin, then they condemn the whole of Christendom. You see, we may be saved, but we are still in the flesh. And the flesh is still seek to satisfy and gratify the flesh. And gratification of the flesh means to use the tools of this world, the tools that Satan is using, in order to defeat Christians and make the life of a Christian miserable. So we will sin. I will sin. You will sin. But the assurance is, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Somebody will defend us. And who will defend us with the Father? Jesus Christ, the righteous. You see, the devil is an accuser. Whenever a Christian sin, like in the time of Job, he will say, look at your child, he committed sin. Look at that Christian, he committed sin. Look at that Christian, he committed sin. But Christ will defend us and will tell the Father, Father, I paid for it all when I died on the cross of Calvary. Amen? That's why our salvation is secured. But at the same time, he said, don't worry, Father. I will discipline this erring child that he may go back to the right path that he must go. Amen? So assurance of salvation has a Siamese twin. And we call it chastisement. You cannot get away with sin even though you are a child of God because God will see to it that you will pay for those things not in hell but here on earth that is why when there is a preaching sometimes you think that the pastor is speaking directly to you when the pastor does not even know what's happening in your life so that is God's chastisement by the word and sometimes you might get sick I'm not saying that all sick people are being chastised by God but that is also a form of God chastisement and if you will not listen to God he will take you home because instead of destroying the testimony, he will just say, son, let's go home. And we are going to talk there. That is how God treats his children in this world. So he is our witness, and he is watching. He is our witness, and he is defending. It also means that there is nothing that we can hide from God. God knows everything. God knows your name, your middle name. Your last name, if you use aliases, God knows them. The Bible even says that God knows the very number of your hair. And God knows if there is no more hair. I will also know that. And I'm losing so much of that hair. But God knows everything, amen? And there is nothing that you can hide from God. And because of that, it is something that is very discouraging sometimes. Because you know that God knows what we're thinking. And God is actually telling you when you watch basketball, you're enthusiastic. When you watch Pacquiao in boxing, you're enthusiastic. When you watch your telenovelas, especially the Korean telenovelas dubbed in Tagalog, you're very interested and you do not want it to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are saved and you listen to the word of God and you get born at Pagkatapos de Inipka, listen to me, shame on you. You may not be saved if you do not enjoy the word of God. You see, God knows that. That's why you remove that from your mind. <laughs> and, well, I'm not encouraging you to at least pretend <laughs> that you are listening, but do listen to the word of God. Amen? Amen? But it is also encouraging. Because if God knew everything, then he knows our weaknesses, and he can help us go through these weaknesses and strengthen those things. You see, uh, in the life of Zacchaeus, do you remember Zacchaeus? A wee little man. Ano siya? Pandak, maliit, taga-pandakan, Manila. 
si Zacchaeus. And he heard that the Lord Jesus Christ will come that way. So he uh, ran ahead and he uh, climbed a sycamore tree. And the Lord Jesus Christ stopped right where Zacchaeus was. Why? Because God knew that Zacchaeus was there. And then he says, Zacchaeus, come down. I will go to your house. So God knows what Zacchaeus needs. And because he knew what we need, then he can supply those needs if we will only trust in the Lord. Amen? So we must take comfort that our God is an all-knowing God. So God is witnessing the road that we are traveling in. God is witnessing uh, the, the things that we are doing in our lives, all of our decisions, our uh, rights and our wrongs, our uh, righteous dealings and unrighteous dealings, our responses, reactions, and our reasons for doing things in the Lord. And God knows our integrity. There is just nothing that we can hide from Him. So let us be real in the sight of God. Let us be real in the sight of God. Because Christians should not pretend. You know, the word pretend comes from the word that is translated actors in English. The actors are not who they seem to be. They may be good in movies, but we will really not know them until we know them personally. That is why actors can easily win the election if they are portrayed in movies as the good guys. But if you are portrayed as the villain, you will get no votes during election. So you need to see to it that if you want to be in politics, then be a, a good uh, character in all your movies. But God knows our hearts. And we cannot hide anything from Him. Number two. The dedicated Christian has a serving spirit. Ephesians 6, 6, not with eye service. Or men pleasers, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Do you notice? Not with eye service or men pleasers. We are not to please men. We are to please God. Do you know why? If you try to please men, you are going to please so many people. But if you try to please God, you please only one person. And He's the only person that matters. Amen. So please God! And if people are not pleased, then they are against God. Please God! And if they are pleased, then they are for God. So that's the way to, to find out who are the people that are really serving the Lord. Have you tried to please everybody? It's hard for a preacher. Some of you want short message some of you want just uh, enough length of a message and some of you wants a long message how can I please all of you I will please first point okay those who love short messages you can now go <laughs> some of you stay second point is finished okay those of you who want intermediate message you cannot go and those who will remain are only those who want long messages. It's, it's hard. Yeah. Uh, there is a favorite illustration that, that I know about that. Is that when you're trying to please everybody, you're not going to do it. It is a futile uh, action to do it. Uh, there are these uh, father, son, father, wife, and a son that is traveling with a donkey. They're going from one place to another place. So while uh, th they are doing that, no father and a son only, let us remove the woman uh, because they're not included anyway, <laughs> with, with no offense. And then what happened is that they are both riding the donkey. And they pass through one place and the people said, look at that father and son. They do not uh, take pity on that donkey. It is a very small uh, donkey and two of them are, are riding that donkey. So the father said, son, I think they are right. So let us just go down. I will go down and you continue riding the donkey. And they passed to another place and they said, what is happening with our young people today? The father is very old and walking while the son is still strong and he's the one riding the donkey. He said, I think son, they are right. You go down and I will be the one to ride the donkey. And they passed another place and the people said, what kind of a father is that? He's letting his boy to suffer while he, the father, who should protect the son, is the one riding the donkey. 
So he said, I think they are right. So let us just walk together with the donkey. And they passed another place and the people said, look at those dumb father and son. They have a donkey. And they're not even riding it. So he said, I think son, they are right. And now they pass to another place and they are carrying the donkey. <laughs> and I believe that people will say something against it. Why? You just cannot please all people. But praise God, we can please the Lord. Amen? Amen. If we are doing what is right in the sight of God. So we need to do these things by the grace of God so that we can glorify God. Number three. The dedicated Christian, Pastor Amin is that 86. <laughs> the dedicated Christian is persistent and prayerful. Paul was persistent in a number of areas in life. He was not a quitter. He does not quit. He will continue no matter, even if all odds are against him. He will keep on keeping on for the Lord. But there is one area wherein he was very consistent and that is his prayer life. That is why no wonder Paul is a very strong Christian because he is a very prayerful Christian. The saint is only strongest when the saint is on his knees. Because whenever we are on our knees, we depend upon God. And when we depend upon God, then nobody can defeat us. I remember what Bloody Mary said in a, one of the story of John Knox. He said, I do not fear the armies of England. But when I was Scotland, but whenever I see John Knox on his knees, I tremble because I know that his God will do something at the request of John Knox. So our power rested on our knees. And Paul says that he is praying for them without ceasing. That's why in first at Thessalonians 5:17 he says, Pray without ceasing. What does it mean? It means consistently, it means without letting up. It is like a hacking cough that would not go away. A Christian life must be saturated not only by the word of God, but also by prayer to God. Amen? And when that happens, we, by the grace of God, are going to become a strong Christian. And maybe I will end on the fourth one. We will just continue this next week. But in verse 10, it says, Making requests, if by any means... Now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. You see, among all the Christians that churches established during the ancient time, the churches in Rome are not visited yet by an apostle. That's why people are saying, if uh, the, the ascending church will not establish a church, there can be no, no church. No, ladies and gentlemen. These were established even without the knowledge of the apostle. And when Paul heard about their faith, he said, I wanted to go there. Because I want to prosper in your faith. And I want to have fruit also among the people in Rome. So he says, if by any means, it means that, Paul will do everything, whatever it takes, by the will of God, in order to reach Rome. Peter had not been there, and Peter did not even reach Rome. That is why it is a very, very erroneous doctrine to teach that Peter was the first pope. He did not even see Rome until he died. Why? Because Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles who went through the Gentile world, including Rome, while Peter is an apostle to the Jews who stayed in Jerusalem until the day that he died. So that is a very erroneous teaching to even claim that Peter is the, was the first pope. And not only that, Peter was married. He, has a, he had a uh, uh, mother-in-law. And there is a possibility that he has a son or a ch uh, uh, even children in the word of God. So that is erroneous. And that's why it is very important to base everything according to the scripture. Because we do not know sometimes what is being taught us are traditions that are against the Lord. Jesus Christ or not according to the word of God. So number four, lastly, 
The fourth trait of a dedicated Christian then is a willingness and desire to do God's will. If you're a dedicated Christian, you're going to have a desire and willingness. Meaning to say, you are not forced to do it. You know, some people are serving God because they are forced to. Some people are serving God because they are mama called, papa called, pastor called. We must be called by God in order to serve Him. And do it willingly. So, Paul says, by the will of God, he says, to come unto you. So what is the will of God? God's will for a Christian is something that is perceivable or known. Because God wants us to know His will. And we can know the will of God through prayer, the word of God, your parents, and the, the Christian workers that the Lord is, is using in your life. So there must be multiplicity of counselors to know the will of God. Do not just listen to your feelings because it is just feelings, nothing more than feelings, trying to forget my feelings of love. <laughs> feelings is based on your heart and the Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all. Who can know it? So in order for you to ascertain the will of God, go to God in prayer, go to the word of God, go to the parents that God has given you, if they are Christians and they know the word of God, and go to the leaders that God has given you in the church, and you may know the will of God in your life. Romans 2.18 And knoweth his will, and approveth the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. So you cannot know the will of God apart from the word of God. That's why if your advice, contrary to the word of God, definitely it is not the will of God in your life. For example, well, uh, do you really love him? Oh yes, I really love him. But he is an unbeliever. But yes, I know, but I love him. Well, follow your heart. <laughs> follow your heart. The Bible is very clear. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So if it is contrary to the word of God, do not even pursue it. But you know, sometimes when old age is knocking at the door and the last trip seems to depart, the ladies are lowering their standards and will go for whoever it may be. That's why we, we have a joke that you will know if the, the ladies are still young and are really praying for a specific person in the will of God. When it's hot, they, they, they use the, uh, uh, the hand fan and they, they, they do like this. Tall, dark, handsome. Spiritual, love the Lord. Tall, dark, handsome. Spiritual, loving the Lord. But when the heat goes up, they will do like this and they're advancing in age. Anybody, 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 anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter who. Don't be like that. If it is God's will for you to be single, you're going to be happy being single. Amen. If it is God's will for you to have a husband or a wife, you will be happy. But if having a husband or a wife will Make your way, drift you away from God. Don't even do it. Remain single. You see, some ladies are uh, trying to assert their own will. Listen to me. If God, if Jesus is not enough for you, no other man will be enough for you. Because Jesus Christ is more than enough. Amen? Amen. And if we have him, then we have everything. Number two. Uh, the will of God is something that is provable. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. You see, you can prove it. The Bible says, And be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove. So you can prove it. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? There is a problem here. Some Christians interpret this as, God has a perfect will for your life and He has a permissive will for your life. 
If it is not His perfect will, He will allow you to do it even though it is not His perfect will. He will permit you because it is His permissive will. No. That is not how you interpret the word of God. It says, But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The will of God is not three. It is one will described in three different ways. Meaning to say, God's will is both good and acceptable and perfect. Because if you will say otherwise, my question is, what is the good will of God? My second question, what is an acceptable will of God? And my third question is, what is the perfect will of God? And you will not be able to answer that because you erroneously interpret the word of God. What the word of God is saying, that God's will is always good, it is always acceptable, and it is always perfect because God never commits mistakes. Amen. And that is something that we need to understand. Number three, it can be performed. Matthew 6.10 Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, if that is God's will, you can do it. And God will help you do it. That's why if you want the will of God and you want to do it, pray for guidance and instruction to do it. Look at Psalms 143 verse number 10. We're almost there. Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of righteousness. So you will know how to perform the will of God by reading the word of God. This morning, I emphasize how important knowing the word of God is. You will not be deceived, you will not fall into error, and nobody can lead you astray if you know the word of God. But the sad thing is so, may, so few Christians are diligently studying the word of God. That is why so many Christians in our time today are ignorant of the word of God. Their final authority is becoming their emotion, their feelings, what they think. It's not according to the word of God anymore. We are being uh, lured into thinking that there must be unity in spite of our diversity. Ladies and gentlemen, there must be unity in the doctrine of the Word of God. If we are not the same, then we are different. If we are not the same, then we are different. If we are different, then we are not the same. That is very deep. Amen? <laughs> and we need to understand that. That's why there is a saying in Cambodia, who is wrong, same, same, but different. I said, huh? Same, same, but different. Different, but same, same. It's not same. To think about that, amen? So, God wants us to be united in His will. Not out of His will. First John 5.14 It is a powerful ingredient in getting your prayers answered. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. Don't ever waste your time praying out of God's will, He will never answer your prayer. Lord, give me three husbands. No. No. But I'm a Muslim. It doesn't matter. No. Lord, make me a man. Even if you're a woman, God will not answer that prayer. But Lord, look at me. I'm a woman trapped in my, a man's body. You see, that is what the Word is doing. The Word is destroying the design of God. Yeah. As I have mentioned a while ago, so sad that as of this morning, the uh, poll in the Congress about same-sex marriage, 53% voted yes for same-sex marriage and 47% voted no. My. What will happen? I just wonder if... I hope their parents believe in same-sex marriage. 
Because if they did, they will not be hearing this word in the first place. But that is what's happening. They are destroying the very design of God. Why? Do you know why? Because they do not know the word of God. The word of God is clear. Created them. Male and female. The man is created for the woman. And the woman for the man. God created Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. But that is what they're doing. And sad to say, so many Christians are just sitting down, not doing anything, not raising their voice to say that we must not destroy the design of God. So pray for the will of God. Do the will of God. And once we do this, then God will help us. And then, finally, of course it's not final, but we will continue next week. But it says here, pain and suffering may be involved in the will of God. So the will of God is never easy. We will pay a price to do the will of God. Jesus says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Deny yourself. That is the hardest thing to do. Because we are full of ourselves. Deny himself Take up his cross, suffer for him, and follow Jesus daily. And 1 Peter 3, 17 says, and we will end here. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing, than for evil-doing. So even when you do well, Suffering may come because that is the will of God. Accept it with an open heart. Be joyful. Paul, uh, Peter says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. James says, uh, Peter, uh, James said that Peter says, think it not strange of the fiery trials that will try your faith. Remember Job? He is a person who is upright, skewed the evil, but remember all the sufferings that he received. But in the end, it redounded to the glory of God. Christian, what are you facing right now? Where are you in your spiritual condition? What is happening here? Are there so many questions that are left unanswered? We have the word of God. We have the people of God. Desire that you do God's will in your life and God will continue to open doors that you will understand his word understand his will and God will equip you to do his will for your life I hope and I pray that we will have this trait of a dedicated Christian because only a dedicated Christian can make a difference in this world shall we stand in place